There is one student I had, when I gave him an essay, refused to fill it out. And here was my conversation with him. I realize that you don't want to do this, but you need to understand that I'm a representative of the Board of Education. And they would call it defiance. They would not be very happy if I allowed a youngster to defy the Board of Education. I'd like you to fill it out. I'd like you to stay in class. But if you decide that you're not going to fill out the form, then you're saying, I do not belong in this classroom because you'll be defying the Board of Education. I then said, if your pencil or your pen is not to the paper in two minutes, then you're saying to me, you're not responsible enough to stay in this classroom. I'd like, to keep, I'd like you to stay here, but that's your decision. I then walked away and gave the kid space. He was a gang member. In 30 seconds, he fell, picked up a pen and fell out the form. He never had to fill out another form. So that's what happens with the essay. But there comes a time when you need to go something further. So every day is a new day. Jason would come into the classroom. Oh, am I going to be good today? I mean, I think Jason came out of the womb laughing. This kid had the greatest confidence of any kid I've ever seen. Total lack of impulse control. Every day is a new day. I may give the kid an essay. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Marshall. But it got to the point that I had to give Jason, I was up to three self-diagnostic referrals in the first quarter. Now, the essays, as you know, I didn't keep. But the self-diagnostic referrals, I did keep. And here's how it worked out. After the first self-diagnostic referral, and on the form, that, and you will read it, the first is kept between the teacher and me. If a second referral is necessary, then I had the parent involved. I thought it was necessary at this point to at least alert the parent. By the way, my particular style was, I rarely called a kid's parent. I was interested in the kid, and chances are, if the kid is having difficulty in school, the parents have got problems with them also. And it's all, so many parents know it's punishment, and I didn't want the kid to be punished, because I don't think that's the most effective way to have the kid change behavior. But when it came to a point where I had to inform the uh, parent, what happened is, the student and I walked into the office together. We would call the parents, oftentimes at work. I would then give the phone to the youngster. The youngster had to explain to the parent why he was calling the parent during work or even at home. And everything I do, if it's the essay, if it's a self-diagnostic referral, it's the calling home, it's the youngster who does the work. If I want the youngster to change, I'm not going to do the work. The youngster has got to do it. So now we're at the point where I have two self-diagnostic referrals. I made copies of both of them. I then took the parent letter. So, so all I did is I filled out the top of it. And then at the very, with the kid's name, etc. And then at the bottom, what the main problem was. I did not tell the kid I was going to mail it home, but I put it in an envelope and I mailed it home. Along with it was the student copy of the Levels of Social Development, which of course is in your resource guide. If a third one was required, and I only had to do that with two students, Jason and Robert by name, I, I had three essays I gave a copy, I made a copy of each of the essays, again, mailed it home. I was really not concerned if I ever got them back or not. I did, but I felt an obligation to at least inform the parent or the parents. And what happened was I had three referrals from Jason the first quarter. What was I going to do? Three strikes are out. And by the way, another reason why I had them do the self-diagnostic referral is if I had or felt obligated to send Jason to the office, 
the officer knew exactly what I had done to help Jason improve himself. And by the way, Jason spent most of his time at the office, more than he did in another teacher's classroom. It's Robert the same way. So, what happened is, every day is a new day. Mr. Marshall, am I going to be good today? Okay, that was the warning. That I said, Jason, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Marshall. If you did it again, I then took a regular office referral and I put it on Jason's desk. And I said, Jason, I would like you to stay in class today. And by the way, the referral was all filled out with the exception of the date. And I said, if you feel that you cannot control yourself to act in a mature, on a mature level, then that tells me you're not mature enough to stay in the classroom. I'd like to keep you here, but that's your option. That's your decision. Now, Jason is the type of the kid who had to see it, he had to smell it, he had to touch it, he had to feel it. But even Jason is wise enough and has enough control not to go over the cliff. I never had to send Jason or anyone else to the office the entire years that I was teaching. I'm not saying you will not you will have the same success, but my philosophy was that if I had to send a kid to the office, I was not successful. So as a result, I tried everything I possibly could to have the extra stay in the class. 